Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for coming. Appreciate my colleague, Senator Ryder, coming up, a good uh, East Illinois University alumni. I think you're in the Hall of Fame, aren't you? you um, that's the rumor. That's the rumor. Um, we do appreciate you coming out here. Uh, Dale and I and a number of our colleagues uh, yesterday today filed two different bills, uh, one dealing with core funding for higher education. I want to state this on the front end. Our bill is the only bill pending anywhere that funds the operational expenses of the institutions, the students MAP grants, and also community colleges. The bill the Democrats passed yesterday contained community colleges and MAP grants but no funding for the institutions. Zero. Not one penny. Uh, there's another bill pending by one of the Democratic members, Senator Bennett, that funds the institutions but not the students in their MAP grants. So first and foremost, our bill is the only one that comprehensively addresses all three prongs of that table. Um, secondly, and I think almost more importantly, our bill is the only one that actually has any way to pay for some of this spending. Um, we are attaching a second bill key to procurement reform. And uh, procurement is just real simple as how the state purchases anything, how we purchase a pencil, how we purchase statutes, how we purchase roads, how we purchase anything we purchase. The state of Illinois' procurement rules have gotten, it's not even ludicrously uh, uh, out of control to the point where the governor in his state of the state address on Wednesday noted that we waste half a billion dollars a year, half a billion dollars a year on our procurement reform. Now I'm gonna give you some concrete examples. I'm gonna give you some concrete examples important to this area right here and to taxpayers everywhere. The group prescription drug contract, that's a 10 year contract. It's a, it's, it was a three year initial period with seven one year options for renewal. It was worth almost $3 billion over that time. The first three bidders to bid that contract were all kicked out. Every single bidder was kicked out because they couldn't comply with the state of Illinois' procurement rules. Now these are not, as you can imagine, fly-by-night companies built, bidding $3 billion contracts. These are Express Scripts, Caremark. These are big national companies with entire phalanxes of attorneys and compliance specialists to make sure they bid correctly, but they couldn't bid. The second bid, because they had to go back to bid, Express Scripts, who had been the incumbent provider, was kicked out. Their bid was never opened. I'm going to read you a quote from last year at the Commission on Government Forecasting Accountability, where I was questioning the Chief Procurement Officer in charge of this bid, $3 billion bid. <clears throat> Of these non-curable events in the first round, all three bidders were disqualified. And who were they again? Chief Procurement Officer, Catamaran, Caramark, Express Scripts. So these are major national companies. Response, yes. Who have regulatory compliance staff, things of that nature. Ex response, I pre presume so, yes. But they couldn't figure out how to bid successfully in Illinois under our current procurement code. That's right, came the response. What he said next, should stun everyone watching or reading this news conference. I asked, so there's no way to know the taxpayers got the lowest price for a $3 billion contract. Quote, absolutely, we don't know. Half a billion dollars wasted a year on not taking the lowest bidder. Health Alliance, this community, big deal in central Illinois and east central Illinois. Big deal. They got kicked out of the bid, and guess what? They turned out being the lowest bidder. How much did that cost the taxpayers? Former University of Illinois President Bob Easter testified in our committee last year, the Senate Appropriations Committee, the Senator Ryder and I sit on, that it cost the University of Illinois upwards of $70 million a year in procurement problems for the state of Illinois. I could go on and on. There's many of them listed in here in the packet. I've got example after example, institution after institution. This is ludicrous. It's particularly ludicrous when the state has no budget for higher education. Now, what we're doing, to be clear, we filed a funding bill, would fund higher ed at 80% of last year, community four year, community college 90%, and full funding for MAP. But importantly, because of the procurement reform, Higher Ed gets some of that money back 
not just in this remaining fiscal year, but forever, which is a huge benefit to students and their families for generations to come, as the alma mater notes. So uh, I want to turn it over to my friend Dale Ryder. The only other comment I make before I do that is the procurement bill itself, a shell bill was filed. The uh, language is being, they're putting the finishing touches on it. But again, this is a university initiated thing. It's been negotiated with the governor's office. Um, I think you'll see the final language next week. And with that, thank you, Senator Ryder. You bet. Thanks, Chapin. Uh, it's good to be here. Thank you, Chapin, for inviting me up here to take part in this. Um, the problem that we face is very simple, and that is during a time of ongoing crisis like we have right now, how do we make sure and get the badly needed funds to the institutions of higher learning in the state, both for your universities and community colleges, and get students who need the financial help, that financial help so they can stay in school while we're dealing with this crisis. Uh, we have put on the table, now this is the second alternative that we put on the table, and that is here's funding for higher education, all three legs of that stool, if you will, albeit at reduced rates because we don't have the money at reduced rates, but also with some kind of mechanism beside it to help pay for it, whether that's giving the governor some expanded authority to move money around in the budget. Now, typically that would be the General Assembly's job, but the General Assembly's not being responsible in doing it. If the General Assembly as a whole would stand up to the step up to the plate and balance the budget, the idea of giving the governor extraordinary authority would never occur to anyone. But that's what you have to do when the General Assembly is sitting on the sidelines like it is right now. Or in the case of this second alternative, to give the universities and the community colleges some money back so they can save the money that will save ta state taxpayer money in the end. If there's a third idea or a fourth or a fifth, we're open to it. That's meaningful. Uh, we are waiting on the speaker. We are waiting with all due respect on Senator Bennett. We are waiting on any Democrat to come forward to us and say, we really want to fund all three components of higher education, but we recognize there are other issues out there and we have to deal with those. The notion that the speaker of the House of Representatives would tell the almost 200,000 college students in this state that go to four-year universities that they're just not that important that we're going to send an appropriations bill out of the House and we're going to insist that the Democrats in the Senate vote for it and it does have not one dime for four universities isn't real, it isn't serious, it demonstrates they're not willing yet still to step up to the plate and try and solve the problem and as Chapin mentioned the appropriations bill that's in the Senate from Senator Bennett that affords zero money to students who need a little extra money to get through their college expenses is laughable and it's very disappointing. There are two appropriations bill now in the Senate. Both of them are realistic. If there are other ideas the Democrats, the Speaker, Senator Bennett have in a way to deal with this, we're all ears.